this is the third video tutorial just uh, showing you how uh, Revit um, links with SansCalc and uh, just with the Revit X uh, or SansCalc exporter. Alright, the exporter is for version uh, 2013 and version 12 of Revit, uh, so both are catered for. Um, just a couple of things that uh, we need to just um, look at when you um, export. I've got a little building here and I'm going to just going to uh, enlarge the floor plan. Um, the first thing uh, we just need to look at is um, your all your walls need to just be pointing to the outside. Um, now how you know um, that it points to the outside is that um, that's the, the wall orientation. So that little uh, double arrow needs to just point to the outside and in this case this uh, wall is um, drawn so that the outside is actually on the interior so I was just going to do that so the exterior of the wall points to the exterior of the building alright um, so that's the, the first step you need to do just going around and checking that all your walls point in uh, the exterior side of your wall points to the exterior then um, the I did, uh, Another um, test that you just need to do is um, your wall joins just needs to be mitered. So if I go to um, the walls um, under the modify wall join tool and I go to select a, a corner on each of these walls, you'll notice that it's um, already mitered. Um, I've obviously done that prior. I uh, just want to show you on this uh, a corner over here, that wall connection isn't mitered. So how I do that is just click on, on the miter and it now becomes mitered. Um, some other um, connections might not um, be able to miter. So if I select that connection and I click on the miter box over there, um, it just jumps back to the butt. So um, in this case I'll have to just double check um, both these walls in um, this ex SANS export tool. Now um, a nice tool that we brought in is um, if I look at this um, wall, you'll notice its properties it doesn't have a mark by default. Now our tool would assign a mark to these um, walls so that you can double check and uh, cross reference the information from SansCalc into your walls and the marks provided. Right, so that's uh, another check and then also just make sure <coughs> the third check is that uh, these external walls, if you go to its uh, prop type properties, that they are uh, an exterior wall. Now, s also note that if you have interior walls, just double make double sure that they are not exterior, but uh, something else, like, uh, for instance, interior. Alright, so that um, SansCalc only looks at the exterior um, walls and exports that. Right, I'm going to just uh, do that and um, now I'm going to show you how um, ex the uh, export works. Um, once you've installed it, you can go to the add-ins. Um, there's an installer for 32-bit windows and an installer for 64-bit windows. Right, downloadable from um, the SansCalc website. Alright, you go to the add-ins tab and then uh, under the external tools, you'll notice uh, SansCalc export is over there. Once you click on the, the SansCalc export button, it looks at your drawing <coughs> and then uh, opens up the export um, dialog box. Right, this dialog box then um, contain all the elements including your, uh, your f facades and your curtain walls. Right, looking at the rooms, this is the room area that, um, that we have. Um, Currently we only have one room, um, it looks at the room objects, then uh, it looks at the fenestration elements, <coughs> all of them are on ground floor, their marks, heights, width, areas and their orientation. These orientations are based on the walls orientation. Remember we changed one of these walls to, to be exterior, um, if those are all pointing to the exterior, these orientations will be correct. Right, so I'm going to take all the windows to be exported and um, similar the, the doors over here in the middle there's a door its also orientation is based on the wall uh, or, in, or its hosts orientation. 
right. <coughs> then uh, the hosts or the, the walls, um, they are uh, in the facades. Now here is the marks that have automatically been assigned to each wall so that you can cross-reference. Um, all the lengths have also been picked up um, and uh, you'll notice um, you know the, the wall lengths are correct. It picks up the exterior uh, length of the wall and that's why we had to mitre some of those um, information. Right, um, <coughs> right the, over here on that corner you would notice that this wall here um, um, is not correct as it's uh, the corner over there wasn't mitered. Um, the curved wall there is also uh, correct um, and, uh, and, and so on. Looking at the, the curtain walls and uh, there's the curtain wall over here that's the, the length of the curtain wall which is also um, correct. Alright, so it picks up 99% um, uh, of the, the walls correctly. You'll just have to uh, manually just double check. I'm going to just include all of those. Uh, I forgot to actually include them. I'll go to export and I'll give this a project uh, name project name um, from Revit 2013 <coughs> and you just click save. Now what it does, it creates that uh, database file so in the background uh, Sanscal could be open so it's uh, not a problem. Um, what it also has created or done is it has assigned um, marks to each of these walls. If I select that wall, scroll down, there's the mark. And uh, if I click on that one, that is the mark um, assigned to that. Um, an, a good way or easy way just to uh, show the marks on your drawing is to perhaps go and uh, tag it. Now, there is a, a tag uh, that's uh, fairly um, substantial that will solve the issue and that's loaded from the UK library. Um, if you're not in the UK library you can just go to libraries and then go to the UK library or install it um, at a later stage and then go to uh, annotations tags and scroll down to the wall tags uh, it'll be wall tag number one. Open that it loads that specific UK uh, wall tag into your um, drawing and then you can go to annotate at the top and tag all, tagging all the walls with your new um, wall tag uh, one number only. Apply that and say OK and you'll notice uh, there's a little number next to each wall and these are the um, walls that's been assigned um, to, uh, to just cross check and uh, double check your wall lengths from Sanscal into um, Right, I'm going to at this stage just uh, minimize that. Um, I have now, um, this is Sanscalc, I'm busy with something else and um, perhaps I now want to open my exported drawing. So I'll just click on open. What it'll ask me is uh, the current information that I'm currently busy with. Do I want to save that and close it? I'll say yes. Right, once that's saved and closed, it'll ask me which file do I want to now open. So I scroll down to my uh, exported database and I open that and uh, it'll then replace whatever I had with this new uh, drawing file. Just to make double sure here at the top you can just double check and see alright this is the, 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 the database that I am busy with and you'll notice that um, <coughs> I've got two levels here. This level is basically was my roof level. It doesn't have any floors and anything so um, I can typically just uh, delete that level uh, from my database. Right, so the ground floor is what I require so um, looking at the rooms, there's the rooms and off the bat I can actually go and uh, save this and see if I exceed or um, not the 15% requirement um, of my glazing. So I can see, alright, I exceed the 15% uh, so I need to perform the calculations. Right, um, the reason why this is um, there is that um, now you need to go and focus on your um, uh, performance. If 
that has been less than 15%, you don't have to do um, the calculations. Right, so now that I need to do the calculations, there's my room. Um, perhaps I'm going to want to do um, mechanical and natural, so I'll, I'll, I'll do the facades as well. Right, now, um, looking at the facades, that is uh, going to be S1. Why? Because on the right-hand side, there is the S. Um, this is going to be E1. Um, that's going to be S2. Why? Because I've got a U-shaped building pointing um, to the uh, south. That's going to be south 3. And uh, that's east 2. Uh, north 1. And west Right, so unique numbers in here. These are the, the, the marks that uh, I can cross-reference uh, for, for my walls to the, the river drawing. Um, I can also just uh, multi-select them, and here's the height. I already know that um, my story height is uh, 2.6 um, meters, so I just uh, multi-select and multi-add that in. Um, here I can go and tweak these lengths, uh, typing in different uh, values. Right. Um, once that's done and uh, double checked with my drawing, I can go ne to the next uh, step. My windows have all been completed. Um, I can again uh, multi-select. I'll add the facades in a minute. Um, I'm going to multi-select and add the G and P values uh, by using the multi-select option here at the top and uh, just typing both those values. Now I've predefined that these values are correct and uh, I've just uh, multi-added them in. All these being selected I can also just add my uh, glazing um, and frame type in by just selecting it and saying apply changes. All the rest has been calculated. Now I'm going to go back to my uh, facade here. This is now south orientation. So I will uh, link this to the south um, facade. And uh, I can maybe, uh, this is now also, um, I must now obviously just double check and make sure that uh, this is now the correct facade. <coughs> this is west. All right, so you go through and uh, add your, um, this is east. One. Now, what's nice about this, it's also marked, so you can cross-reference that to your window marks in um, in the um, in your actual actual drawing. Right, just uh, these two. Uh, that's north. Right, so it's a, a little bit of a um, just to uh, these two. I can also just multi-select and just make sure that they're both uh, north as well. So, right, so I've uh, added all of that in. Um, obviously, just double-checking them um, by the, the actual plan. Right, uh, looking at the glazed doors, I must also link that to a um, elevation. That's going to be south. That's it. And uh, the G value, I can sort of put in here, because it's only a singular object. And uh, the glazing I can just select from this list. Um, as we said earlier, if this glazing is uh, custom, you can also add it in um, as a custom, adding your uh, custom U and uh, solar you can values. Right, that all gets calculated and uh, that should be fine. I've got one curtain wall in here that's also um, in, in a f specific facade, which I know is uh, the west facade. And, um, the height of this one is about 2.1 and um, <coughs> I'm going to just put the same values in here. Um, this is the one that's uh, probably the um, the most, uh, adds to the most um, values here which is, is not very um, conducive to the, to the reporting. Right, uh, at this stage um, what I haven't done is I haven't set up my zone, so I can select the zone from, uh, say, Port Elizabeth, and then uh, say do all calculations. Um, the reason why I say do all calculations is I've already got uh, information here, which just needs to be updated uh, based on my um, s uh, zone. Um, save all of that, and then I can go and do uh, my report. 
Right, uh, selecting my report, I uh, include the mechanical ventilation as well because I've done all the facades and then my uh, cover page. Right, uh, save that, do a preview. There's the, um, the areas over here um, and uh, the natural uh, ventilation. Um, it's non-compliant because my glazing actually exceeds the allowance um, and it's typically that um, um, the curtain wall that uh, does that. Right, here's some of the um, elevations. I've actually just um, picked up uh, glazing per uh, facade, uh, which I don't think is right, but anyway, um, I should have double checked it. Um, on this side, yeah, there's a non-compliant because that aggregate energy value exceeds the allowable energy value and then the whole facade or the whole mechanical um, one um, is non-compliant. Now, just a double check to, to maybe reduce some of these elements. I can go into the windows um, let's just go back to the report and just uh, have a look at these values over here. Um, I'm going to go back to the windows and or maybe that glazed uh, curtain wall and change its um, glazing here to single low uh, aluminium. Uh, the values obviously update. Maybe I can go to all my windows as well and uh, change them to low E and uh, aluminium. Apply the changes and uh, go and save. This is a, a way to troubleshoot. Um, once you've saved this, you can go back to report and just draw a new report and see how the values have changed in your uh, building. Right, so it's been taken down from about 300 odd to, uh, and this one is nearly com uh, compliant. Some of these values have also, uh, have also now changed. Right, and so you can go and troubleshoot uh, going back to your windows and maybe uh, take all of them and change them to to single or tinted double low and apply that changes and see how the values actually influences uh, or influence your result. Um, you could also uh, multi -sh or create a shading device that will also help with the uh, with the troubleshooting and the values. Right, um, now it's very close. So uh, if I add maybe um, additional overhang or uh, change the, um, the glazing type, I might uh, comply. Alright, so that's basically um, just the workflow through uh, Revit and uh, into uh, Sandscalc. Right, thank you very much for the time.